of a work day. It, I mean, it's only Wednesday, but it feels like it's been a long week already. Thank you all so much um, for being here and for all the partners who have assembled to make this project possible. It's really exciting. The Connectivity Blueprint has been a collaboration between Ramsey County, the city of St. Paul, and the project would not have been possible without the support of the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, and really in this effort, it is, it is, and thinking about the St. Paul and Minnesota Foundation, and a huge thank you to the SD, SDK team, Stephanie and Sandy, for your work on this effort in partnership with the county and the city. Um, it, it has been a really long journey, but a good journey with lots of energy. I also want to thank the steering team members, leaders from all areas of the county that are committed to digital inclusion. COVID-19 illuminated a deep digital divide. I think many of us are tired of talking about COVID, but it really was an opportunity for us as a community to see where there were tremendous gaps in services and to think about who had access and who could easily go home and work for home when we needed to shut down and who couldn't and what that really looked like. And it, and it really illuminated. The Connectivity Blueprint Report makes clear what intuitively brought us all to this project. The future of jobs, healthcare, school, social connection, and opportunities really are online. We simply can't get to an equitable future and an inclusive economy if we can't get everyone in Ramsey County and St. Paul connected. Equally important, it's now clear that policymakers need to expand their thinking about digital equity. It's about people and not just wires. It's about getting people connected and helping them stay connected. Infrastructure is not enough. Now that we have local community-driven voices and data to back this up and shared strategies to move towards solutions, our results come as Minnesota is preparing to create its first digital inclusion strategy and preparing to deploy a first-time digital equity dollars. And we hope that this report will keep community voices front and center in the planning. The county has also grateful to be one of three re recipients in the state of Minnesota alongside Neighborhood House. I'm just gonna go off script because you all should know Nancy Brady if you don't. <laughs> you know, um, I think, about, I think about great leaders that invest in people, and Nancy Brady gave me my very first civilian job when I left the military, and I probably wasn't qualified, but she saw something in me, and so I think about leaders who invest in other people, and it's a demonstration, Nancy, here for me personally, but also to think about this work in digital inclusion and how we can see what people need and how we invest and make those partnerships happen. So thank you, Nancy. Hope I didn't embarrass you. <laughs> uh, you know, um, so uh, Neighborhood House and the Federal Communications Commission Affordability Connectivity Program Outreach Grant. With these funds, we'll be able to leverage community-based trusted messenger relationships to promote the Affordable Connectivity Program and increase awareness of participation in the ACP among eligible households. We have got lots of great speakers, so I'm not gonna waste any more time and turn over to our great, uh, great esteemed mayor, my friend, Melvin Carter. Good afternoon. I am honored to be here and excited for this opportunity. I was just with the governor this morning as we celebrated one of our local entrepreneurs being named Small Business Person of the Year nationally. Just yesterday, yeah. Just yesterday, he was in Washington, D.C. receiving this award from President Biden and Vice President Harris. And today we got to celebrate him here. As a part of that conversation, we were having a big conversation about the digital divide. And we hear people discuss the digital divide in Washington, D.C., and we hear people discuss the digital divide at our state's capital. And oftentimes, they're talking about places. They're talking about making sure that we get fiber, making sure that we get cable, making sure we get high-speed internet to every corner of the geographic spaces that our state and our country touch. That's important. But we also know there's a personal digital divide. That just because a zip code has high-speed internet, that doesn't mean everyone is connected to it. 
That doesn't mean everyone gets a chance to drive it into their future. Chair Maras Castillo made a great point about the extent to which we've seen since the onset of the pandemic the difference between the businesses, between the workers, between the students, between the families who have every tool at their disposal to build a digital future for themselves and those who do not. And so I'm proud that we are working together to ensure that every member of our community does have those tools at their disposal. One thing I tell people all the time is that this work of serving community is a team sport. That what matters more than who your mayor is and who your county board chair is, is how your mayor and your county board chair are working together on our community's behalf. I would say that there has never been a time in our city and county's history when we've been working together as seamlessly as we are right now. This work, this body of work that we're announcing right now is an outgrowth, uh, a, an illustration of our ability to work together. And in truth, if I'm really telling the truth, it's not really an outgrowth of my ability to work with our uh, Ramsey County Board Chair. It's an outgrowth of all the amazing people who work for the city and all the amazing people who work for the county working together with all the amazing people who work for Neighborhood House. <laughs> Would the city and county employees in the room just raise your hand real quick so Chair Modest Castillo and I can clap for you like crazy. <laughs> we all appreciate all of your work that goes into this. I complain all the time. When I got into my office when I first got elected, there was no magic wand there. I don't just get to say abracadabra and ensure a bright digital future for our city. I don't just get to say abracadabra and ensure that all of our students can not only can access the internet, but knows how to use it. I don't just get to say abracadabra and know that all of our small businesses can have an online marketplace that people can access from all over the world. That requires all of us working together, and we are. So I want to thank our partners at the county and at the city. I certainly want to thank the members of the steering committee who have driven us uh, to this day. And without further ado, I want to introduce someone who is a core partner of mine uh, as I work together with the city council. And we're going to let her speak. And you know, there's a city council meeting happening today. So I imagine uh, she's going to have to run, run, run off and go do the people's business on our behalf. So we thank you and appreciate you. Uh, that's Ward 6 City Council Member uh, Nelsie Yang. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much, Mayor Carter. Hi, everyone. I'm Nelsie Yang. I'm, the, um, I'm a proud East Sider, also a council member representing Ward 6 in St. Paul, which is in the East Side of St. Paul. I'm also the first Hmong American woman and also the youngest person to be elected to the St. Paul City Council, which I'm, I'm so proud and, and honored and humbled by. And as I was sitting there, I actually, um, I was very nostalgic because I thought about my own upbringing and, and how this, um, this work is actually really personal to me. And also, is, it touches me on so many levels, especially my work as a council member representing the east side of St. Paul, where we do have families living in the highest levels of income disparities. But you know what? I also live in the side of the city where it's so beautiful. I have so much pride and joy in the diversity of our community there, diverse across class, across race, ethnicity, age, gender, disability, and I feel like this pride and joy is something that you all feel too, which is why you are in this work because we know that within that, that diversity, there are also many challenges that our communities are facing, especially those who are from marginalized communities, and why this work is so important and why it has to be rooted in equity. And I talk about why it's personal to me because I was thinking about when I was, um, you know, I'm the youngest of five. So my siblings and I, we all shared one laptop in our household all the way until I was in my first year of college. And my first year of college was uh, 2014. 
So I, when I was gifted my first laptop, I just broke down in tears. Like it just, I felt like there was so much access to information um, that I was able to get. Um, and like that feeling of joy, the feeling of more is possible, more people, more families need that. And so that's why this work is, is so important to me. Um, achieving digital equity and inclusion is essential for ensuring that everyone has equal access to technology, which is a vital part of participating in society. How many of you used a device today, a technology device? Like literally every single person had their hand up. So we already know how important it is, technology overall. The Connectivity Blueprint Report is a collaborative effort between SDK Communications and Consulting, AppGeo, and the Steering Committee of Experts, which examines the digital divide in Ramsey County and St. Paul from a community-centered perspective. <laughs> Establishing digital inclusion as a foundation for an equitable future is crucial, as it provides everyone with the necessary access to technology, online connections, and skills for jobs, education, healthcare, and social connections. Digital inequities in Ramsey County and St. Paul are rooted in economic inequalities. And I also want to name that the digital inequities, it's not just in our county or here in St. Paul, but it's everywhere. And highlighting the need to address digital inequality as an economic issue, um, it, it's not just a technology issue. And again, this is not only about, this is not about wires, this is about people, and we have to keep saying that over and over again. Rapid shifts in federal and state policies during and after the pandemic have led to increased resources and recognition of digital inclusion as a critical issue of equity and economic inclusion. And I can't be more proud about being a part of this movement where we are rooting our work in equity. We are rooting our work in people. Residents in Ramsey County and St. Paul have three main needs for digital connectivity. Getting connected, staying connected, and knowing how to use the connection effectively. As governments respond to the digital divide with statewide digital equity plans and increased investment, strategic effort and attention must be given to the systemic challenges faced by marginalized communities. The Connectivity Blueprint Report offers several key recommendations, including building awareness of digital equity as an equity issue, strengthening and growing existing programs, collaborating to maximize federal funding for digital equity, and advancing a digital equity policy that makes the internet accessible to all. I'm so proud to be in this work. There's so much more to do, but let's do it together. Thanks, everyone. Hello, everyone. I am Nancy Brady, and I'm the president and CEO of Neighborhood House. And thank you to our chair here for her really warm comments. We had a great time working together um, back in the day. Um, I am delighted to be here and welcome you to the Paul and uh, Sheila Wellstone Center for Community Building. If what we're doing today isn't community building, I don't know what it is, because it's really uh, about allowing us all to work together and um, to have equal access to the opportunities and also equal access to creating opportunities in our community. Um, without uh, digital access and digital literacy, that doesn't happen. So let me tell you a little bit about Neighborhood House. We have been working in the city of St. Paul for more than 125 years. Um, we were, uh, we've always been here on the west side and we work in a number of neighborhoods throughout the city of St. Paul, including the east side, and we are very proud to be part of both the west side and the east side. Um, and what we do is we work with families going through crisis, families new to our community, families that have been in our community for a long time, families in transition, and we help families meet their basic needs, especially healthy food, and housing stability. We help families achieve a sense of belonging in our community. We help families build the skills and the knowledge and the confidence they need to be good employees, to start businesses, to work with their kids, to get an education, to manage their health care, to really operate in our society. 
And in today's era, that means digital connectivity. You illustrated it, right? Everybody in this room used a device. Since the pandemic at Neighborhood House, we have been accelerating our efforts in digital literacy. We have been teaching people how to turn on a device. We've been teaching people what, how to set up an email account. We've been helping people access devices. And we've been helping people access internet connectivity. But that's been a really narrow component. It's been for neighborhood house participants. It's made a huge difference in the lives of those families. They've been able to participate in online classes. They've been able to make healthcare appointments. They've been able to stay connected to their kids' schools. They've been able to stay connected to family that fills their souls. That's what internet connectivity is about. They've been able to access job opportunities. And they've been able to actually succeed in job opportunities. None of that happens without connectivity. And as all of the speakers before me said, not everybody has it. And um, the resources that are going to be available to Neighborhood House and to the other partners through the Affordable Connectivity Program are going to help us solve that problem. They're going to help us fill that gap and bring connectivity and devices and knowledge and skills to everyone in our community. At Neighborhood House, it means that our leader, Katrina Benson, who's been working on this effort for a long time, is going to get two full-time, culturally competent people to work with her, to partner with the county, to partner with the city. We, we don't do anything at Neighborhood House without partnering with those two organizations, right, in numerous ways. Um, we share the Wellstone Center here with El Rio Vista Parks and Rec Center. Um, so. That partnership, having extra people to work in collaboration is going to make a difference. And those resources are coming. And then there's the support of the program. What are they going to be doing? We're going to do this in collaboration. We've already set up, or we're in the process, Katrina is in the process of setting up a tech access collaborative. And, and through that collaborative, all of us that are working on this issue will be able to share best practices our successes, our challenges, learn from each other, solve problems, figure out where the gaps still exist and where we need to go, what's working, what's not working, and how do we actually do this work in success. I could go on and on and on, but what I want to say is that digital inclusion, having access to devices, having access to knowledge, having access to internet, we need more than what we're doing today in connecting people to being able to borrow Chromebooks and hotspots at their local library. People need devices. There's wonderful stories here on the screen. People need devices. They need connectivity. And, that's, and they need knowledge. And we have to solve all of that in order that we all get the benefit of everyone's full participation in our community. Yes, it helps each and every individual, but by doing that, it helps the rest of us too. Because none of us exist in this community without each other. I have a Paul Wellstone quote over my head. We all do better when we all do better. That's what this is about. This is foundational. There is no equity without digital equity.